Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ollie from Flight Comp, and we're going to go over installing aileron servos in a Vertigo wingtip panel. Uh, this is my new light uh, Vertigo that uh, you may have seen in one of my previous previous videos. actually made this Vertigo in Poland with the GCM guys. So we're going to go ahead and give you a little instruction on how to install the aileron servos and do the horns and linkages and all that. Um, so basically you're going to need some, some things. Um, we have all the items that are included with the kit. We have two um, pieces of wire here for the linkage, two control horns. We have two fiberglass um, servo base plates basically. And then we have our servo covers. And then since this is my light model, I'm going to use a KST X08 for the servo. Um, this method that I'm going to show here, it would apply to any servo, so, you know, if you're going to use a different servo, it doesn't matter. This information will still be helpful for you. And then I'm going to use some of these RC Solutions, um, really super precise, tiny, lightweight servo mounts. Um, you don't have to use servo mounts. You could also just use, like, the shrink wrap and glue the servo in method, or just glue the servo in, or however, whatever your preferred way to mount your servo, you can uh, certainly use. So we'll go ahead and get started, and we're going to do that by figuring out where we need to position the horn and the um, aileron. So I'm going to basically put some masking tape on some areas and make some measurements. Okay, so in order to figure out where we need to mount our aileron horn, the first thing we have to do is take some measurements. Um, basically, we're going to use uh, the servo and the linkage wi uh, wire to see where we need to position our servo. What I'm going to do here is basically position the servo from this edge. This edge is where I'm going to take my measurement. And I'm going to account for <clears throat> the thickness of the uh, servo arm and the thickness of the wire. And we're going to take a measurement basically to the center of the uh, servo arm. And just use like a, a little ruler, you know, like this, and go off this edge. And I've already measured this. It's 7 millimeters. So... Then I have my seven millimeter measurement. I'm going to add three millimeters to that, and that's going to be ten millimeters. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like uh, when when the servo is spaced out ten millimeters from this edge. So here's our servo, and it's ten millimeters from this edge here. And basically, this is going to allow us to position the wire in here with the L bend and give us uh, a few millimeters clearance on this edge. And I want to try to keep this wire close to this foam wall in here. That way the, uh, the wire doesn't really have an opportunity to slip out of the arm. And I will actually also later on um, glue a really thin piece of fiberglass or carbon fiber in here um, to give this like a solid surface to hit if it backs out so it doesn't dig into the foam and then fall out. But okay, we have our 10 millimeter measurement that we need. And basically I'm going to mark... Uh, this piece of masking tape that I applied on the trailing edge, it goes all the way around to the top side. I'm going to mark my 10 millimeter mark here, and then we're going to draw a line out towards the uh, trailing edge here. Okay, so use a um, square like this on the hinge to extend uh, your line that's 10 millimeters over from this edge um, all the way down to the trailing edge, and then you're going to mark the very end of the trailing edge, and then uh, continue that line on the other side of the wing. <clears throat> I've already done that. So, you just barely make out my line here. But on this side, you're going to mark here. You're going to continue um, the line you made on the bottom. And then just use the same square and line that up um, on the, um, the hinge. And just continue that line with a pen. And that's going to give us um, a nice line to work off of in order to get our um, control horn installed. So this line here represents the center line of our linkage when it exits the wing, but we can't install the horn on the center line either because we're using L-bends. So we're going to have to offset the horn to the inside of that line, and that's where we're going to um, bond in our horn. So we have to basically cut a slot uh, on inboard of that line, and we're going to um, do that, and we're going to account for the thickness of that wire 
and the thickness of the uh, the horn here and then we're going to draw up uh, the outline of the horn on the masking tape and then just use a uh, brand new sharp exacto knife to cut out the slot uh, for this horn. So now I've marked um, the location where I'm going to cut out the slot for the horn. You see this is our original line and then I've moved over about three quarters of a millimeter and then I have my one and a half millimeter thick uh, outline for my control horn and we're going to make this slot about 19 millimeters long. So I'm going to cut this out uh, with a brand new X-Acto knife. I'm going to go through the tape and through the uh, carbon skin. Note that I'm not going to penetrate through the face of the control of the aileron. Let me turn this around. So I'm not going to cut through on this edge of the aileron. I'm going to leave this sub-trailing edge intact, um, and that'll add a lot more strength uh, to our aileron. So let's go ahead and cut through this. All right, the slot is cut. Um, I just want to urge you guys, if you're building one of these, go really slowly with your knife. <clears throat> Make multiple, multiple, multiple passes. The last thing you want is to be pushing really hard, distort the top surface, or have the knife slip through and go straight through the wing and out the other side. So just go really slow, multiple passes, and you'll get the job done. Um, up here at the sub trailing edge it gets really difficult to cut because there's a lot of carbon here so i basically cut the slot about up to here and then just used a file like this to continue the slot back towards the sub trailing edge and like i said before i did not cut through um, this front surface here okay and so this is the horn we're going to be installing we're going to have to scuff this up really good with some um, coarse sandpaper before we glue it in but i also do want to mention that um, just double check and make sure that the um, the wire goes through the horn before you install everything. Because if it doesn't, um, you're gonna it's gonna be impossible to drill out this hole um, after it's installed in the wing. So make sure this wire goes on. Uh, mine do. They're a snug fit, and that's how I want them. I don't want any slop in these. Um, I did sort of just run these through on these rods a few times just to get it uh, to fit a little better, loosen it up slightly, but it's still a very snug fit as you can see. Okay, um, so make sure that the wire goes through the horn before you glue the horn in. Um, we got our channel cut. I used the file to um, clear out all the Roa cell, um, and I went right down to the bottom skin but don't put too much pressure and don't poke through that bottom skin just get right next to it and then that's good enough so the way we're gonna get our horns in is we're gonna put the trailing edge trailing edge part of the horn in first uh, just push that into the slot and then we'll push down on the front to get it to sit in like that and that's how it's that's how it should look um, the back part kind of goes under the, tr the skin a little bit. That's fine. There's a little recessed area here. We're going to fill that up with epoxy when we um, glue the horn in. So just uh, duplicate this on both wingtips. Obviously, everything's going to be mirrored on the other side. And then we can move on to uh, actually gluing these into the ailerons. All right, before we can move on to gluing the horn in, we have to actually cut a slot for the linkage to exit on top of the wing. And we're going to have to actually bend up our uh, L-bends on both ends of this bit of wire. Um, that means we have to measure how long this piece of wire has to be. Because this, uh, this rod has to be on the horn and inserted through the wing before we actually glue the control horn in. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this slot. This slot is 5 millimeters from the uh, back of the edge here and it's about uh, 12 millimeters long and it's two millimeters wide and obviously it's coming in on this side of the horn so it'll look it'll be like that so it's on this center line our original center line here so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this slot with the uh, exacto and then um, we're going to have to open up the foam for our linkage, and we'll do that with some files. Okay, so one tip is to try to um, get the inside edge or inside corner of this uh, bend really sharp. 
So what I did was um, hit it with a cut off wheel real gently and then I came inside and filed this way and then this way to make this inside uh, corner really sharp. That way the control horn slides up and sits all the way against um, the rod instead of standing off the rod a little bit because there's a radius inside there. That'll just uh, help things uh, fit a little nicer. Alright, so here's how it ends up looking. We have our uh, wire exiting through the slot hooked up to the control horn. Um, that's all nice. The next thing we're going to do is um, get the servo in here and mark on the rod where we need to bend the wire to go into the servo arm. Once we do that, we're going to pull the rod out and then make the other bend. And then we can um, install the control horn with this linkage in place and glue the control horn in. And then basically what's all that's left is to uh, mount the servo. Alright, I've marked my rod where I need to bend it. I have the uh, servo in place. And I've um, fixed the surface with some masking tape so it doesn't move. So it's um, it, uh, you know neutral. And you can find neutral by plugging it into the uh, center panel. Because the center panel you can line up pretty easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this linkage out and then make my bend. Alright, I'm basically ready to uh, install the control horn and linkage. I've made my servo horn. This is the single sided arm for the X08. And I used the uh, shortest hole. And I drilled it out to uh, one and a half millimeters to match our rod. Uh, this is the servo end of the rod. I ground it pretty short. And the control horn side is just slightly longer. The when it's installed in the servo, we have about uh, maybe two millimeters sticking out the back side. We need to keep that short because we actually have to feed this through the wing. And also we don't want this long because it'll end up hitting the case of the servo when we move the servo. So there we go. Um, we're going to scuff this up and uh, basically get uh, ready to get glued in. Alright, I got the uh, horns and linkage all ready to get bonded in. As you can see, I have... The linkage is attached to the horns and the linkage is going through the wing. And then all I'm going to do is uh, put some epoxy in the slots. Uh, this is slow cure epoxy with some cabosil. So we'll just get some epoxy. We have the masking tape already there, so that's going to help keep everything nice and clean. Just fill up the uh, slots really well like this. So I'll continue to do this and then show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so the horns are in, the epoxy's in place. I filled up the back end there with a little bit of epoxy and kind of leveled it off. And um, what I'm going to do now is uh, carefully peel up the masking tape and that'll um, leave us with a uh, nice clean horn installation. All right, the uh, masking tape is off, and we're just going to let this cure overnight. And then we're going to move on to um, installing the actual servos. <clears throat> Here we have servos in the trays. Uh, the horns are on, and we have a little bit of plastic, uh, plastic sh uh, sheeting or plastic baggie between the servo and the frame just to keep all the uh, glue off of the servo. And of course, we're going to use our fiberglass uh, base plates for the installation as well. Okay, ready to get these servos installed. I've mixed up my epoxy here. You can see the thickness of it. It's like uh, mayonnaise, basically. Uh, I have a little acid brush here. I have my plates ready to go. I've sanded them up on both sides. They're ready to go in. And then I've made up... Um, just these little, I'm going to call them like wear plates. It's a piece of scrap uh, carbon from a uh, scrap piece of carbon fiber uh, servo cover, like one of those flat servo covers you get with a model. Just like this, you know, it's like pre-cured. 
And I just cut it up and uh, glued it onto a little bit of balsa, and I'll show you how I'm going to use that in a minute. But basically what I'm going to do is um, apply a thin coat of epoxy in the bay, then I'm going to put the uh, fiberglass plate in, and then we're going to um, bomb the servo in. Alright, that's how my uh, servo bays look with a thin coat of the epoxy. And then we're going to put the trays in. Trays are in, they fit perfectly. Um, that's because all this stuff is cut on a CNC machine, so everything fits really, really nicely. They're in there. And now I'm going to put a little bit, a little bit of a resin down and um, put the servos in. Before I do, I'm going to tape up the control surfaces to get them neutral so that my I'm as close as I can be to having a neutral setup with the servos in the center position. So I'm going to tape these up real quick and then we'll put the servos in. All right, we have a little bit of epoxy in there now, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, just slide our servos in place and make sure everything's lined up. Servos are now installed. They're glued in. Um, so this is how I use those little wear plates. I just glue them uh, to the edge of the foam, as you can see. And basically what that does is it stops the uh, linkage from sliding backwards and coming disconnected from the servo. And it's a more durable surface than just having it pushed up against the foam. And the servo is still easy to remove, just unscrew it and pull it out this way. So I'm going to put some weights on these and just let them cure overnight. So our servo installation is basically complete. Um, the epoxy is cured. All that's left to do is basically uh, put the cover on, route this wire out the wing. It's quite long as you can see and you really don't need it that long. So you can just stuff it up back in the uh, bay. Or um, you could actually trim it a little shorter if you want to save a gram or, or so. Um, I've also put some packing tape over the uh, root of the wingtip panel. I don't know if you can see that, but there is some packing tape here. That's just to protect the surface of the wing when I, you know, when you use tape to secure the tip to the um, center panel. I'll also put the packing tape on the center panel. It'll just uh, help keep our uh, wing looking good for a longer period of time. So that's basically it. Now the other thing I'm going to do is actually going to plug this in and show you how much throw I get and show you how the uh, the servo works. All right, so we have the servo hooked up to a tester, and I'll just show you how the aileron works. As you can see, we're using almost all of the servos available travel, so we're going to get uh, all the uh, precision and power that's available from the servo. Now in this, um, we actually have a physical stop on the upside, which is the, um, it's hard to see, but it's the, uh, the channel for the hinge. And we can actually reach and hit that stop. So we're getting um, all the up throw we can get. And we're getting plenty of down. So I'm looking to get about 16 millimeters up and down. And we're getting about 20 up and down using all of the servos travel. So we're looking like we're in good shape. We might have to cut our throws down, you know, like 10% or so, but not, not down to like 50% or 40%. So that's basically going to wrap it up for the Vertigo uh, servo install. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, this would also apply to basically any kind of uh, F5J model that has a solid core foam wing. If you're going to install servos like this using horns and L-bends. Um, all right, so thanks thanks a lot for watching, and look out for the next video in the Vertigo build series, which is going to be the uh, flap installation, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.